Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will have a short discussion about the tuning of an old transceiver with a PA equipped with tubes, one or two tubes. These transceivers were very popular in the 60s, 70s and early 80s in the last centuries. Nowadays we have transistor PAs, but when you get by or uh, use an old transceiver, you should know how to do it. Sometimes it's difficult to get the manual. Let's have a, uh, first a discussion about the theory. Here we have a schematic of such a PA with tubes. I only draw out one tube. This transceiver we will see in a moment has two tubes in parallel. The principle is the same, one or two tubes. I only show the components which are important that don't show the we have only the control grid, not the screen grid, not the cathode resistor. There's also a coupling capacitor to prevent the high voltage to be fed to the output. Here we have a choke to ground, so, so the antenna connection is grounded for DC. And other things, we have here the control grid, drive input, input frequency. Here we have the anode, here we have the high voltage, it's a big choke. There's a damping resistor in parallel, I didn't show it to prevent any VH, VHF or HF oscillations. And here we have the two capacitors, plate and load. And in series a coil, it's a so-called P filter, because it's a P, a pi, sorry, a pi, not P, pi. And this inductivity is switched with a band switch. When you set it to 3.5 megahertz, there are more turns on it than we set it to the 10 meter band, 28 megahertz. This is a, a coarse tuning, a coarse alignment of the circuit, and this is a fine alignment. And what's the principle? This plate and this load capacitors have a certain relation, and this relation of the two capacitors is like a transformer. We have here a load, typically 50 ohms or so, and this load is transferred via this resonance circuit to the anode. And the anode has a high resistance, high impedance, the range of some kilo ohms. So we have to transfer it from, from here to here, and that's the reason why we have here a rather big capacitor with a high capacity, and here we have a smaller capacitor with a smaller capacity, but the, the voltage rating is higher, so the plates have a little bit more spacing in between. And now, how does it work? This circuit here is, as we have seen, a transformer, impedance transformer, but it's also a resonance circuit. This tube here, which amplifies the input signal, needs here a high impedance. And high impedance means that this capacitor here is in resonance with the rest of the circuit. So this capacitor here has to be aligned for resonance. When we have an input signal of 14 MHz, so this capacitor has to be tuned that we have here 14 MHz resonance. And this means maximum impedance here, and this means minimum current in the tube, because the tube sees at 14 MHz a rather high resistance that is wanted, and this high impedance is transferred to the output. When we detune this capacitor and generate here more current, then we have less output because the circuit is not tuned to the resonant to the resonant frequency. To make it a little bit more clear, imagine you are the tube and you have to deliver output. You want to see a perfect matched load. When you look into this circuit, the best is to see an impedance, which is the equal impedance the tube has. When we have, for example, a tube impedance of one kilo ohm, then we have the best output when we also have one kilo ohm. And this is done by aligning, by tuning this capacitor here. 
And this means when we have the best tuning, we have minimum current. Because when we, when we have here bad tuning, then the tube cannot deliver its high frequency which is generating to the circuit because the circuit is mismatched. Then we have here more current flowing through the tube. It means more heat in the tube, but not more output power due to the mismatched or mistuned plate. The load, however, has to be aligned for maximum output. Of course, and this is a, an alignment which has influence because this is a closed loop. So when we detune this, we have to, to tune this again and so on. The last tuning always is a plate one. Now let's check it in practice. I think it may be get more clear. Here we have the setup for tuning output power meter full scale 200 watt connected to a dummy load 50 ohm. We will try now to tune the transceiver on this frequency. We are on the 20 meter band 14 megahertz. The plate is roughly set to 20. 20 meter loading is in the range of center or so pre-selector which is also the driver is set to 20 plus minus we are in mode tune drive control is set to the left and they go to mox now the transmitter is switched on i go to ic measure the cathode current we have approximately 100 milliamps and now first step is to increase the drive a little bit to get some output. We see the current increases. And now first step we use the plate control to decrease this current. You see there is a resonance point. It's approximately center of 20. Then we use the pre-selector for maximum output. This also causes more current. The circuit is tuned a little bit. When I increase the output with the pre-selector or the driver, we see here we have approximately 10 watts now. And now I use the loading to increase the output. We can see it here. And then play it again for dip. It seems to be okay. Now we can increase the output. And you see when I go to minimum current, we have maximum output. And here we can increase the power, output power again. And also we see here maximum output power is minimum current. Uh, sorry, not not precise, is uh, not not perfect aligned. We shouldn't do it too long. We have the we have a good alignment when the minimum plate current is maximum output. Drive always for maximum. I think it's perfect aligned, perfect tuned. Minimum current is maximum output. And we have 100 watt and more. We shouldn't do this too long. You have seen minimum current with plate, maximum output with loading. Maximum output, of course, with pre-selector and with drive. But it is very, very important to have a dip in the plate current, which is in line with the maximum output. And then we have a good aligned PA and nothing will happen. Always tune for minimum current, not for maximum output. Because when you tune this for maximum output and this for maximum output, then we have two knobs we have a, with an interaction and this will not be good. 
now we are at the end of the short video about the tuning of a tube PA. I hope this was a little bit interesting for you. Whenever you get such an old transceiver, think about this. The plate tuning is always to dip the cathode current or anode current in the tube and the load current, sorry, the load plate is for the maximum output power. Current dip, output power maximum. These are interacting and the last alignment is always, the last tuning is always this capacitor, the dip. And the dip should be in line with the maximum output power. It needs a little bit of experience, feeling in the thumb to know the, the transceiver. But always have a look at the current meter. Do not exceed the uh, maximum current which is given in the manual in the handbook. In general it's 200 or 300 milliamps for such tubes, not more. Because a uh, higher current will uh, have a negative influence on the lifetime of the tube. Okay, that's it. Stay healthy, stay tuned. See you on this channel.